How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here, and welcome to a Metal Gear Solid 5 discussion. Today I want to talk about an iconic moment that can be found in every numbered Metal Gear game that was sorely missing in Phantom Pain. While every game in the series does have a distinct flavor, there are certain traditions that remained a constant until V came along. Granted, the point of V was to change things up, which is one of the reasons why Kojima opted to use the Roman numeral 5 over the Arabic number, but this is just one of those things that I think would have worked really well in Phantom Pain. So what is this iconic moment that I'm talking about, you ask? I'm referring to the epic one-on-one -on -one battles that every numbered Metal Gear game concluded with. And I'm not even just talking about the solid games, even Metal Gear 1 and 2 had this iconic moment, which has since been a staple of the series. Metal Gear 1 ended with a one-on-one -on -one fight against Venom Snake, Metal Gear 2 against the real big boss, then Metal Gear Solid 1 against Liquid Snake, Metal Gear Solid 2 against Solidus Snake, Metal Gear Solid 3 against the boss, and finally Metal Gear Gear Solid 4 against Liquid Ocelot. Metal Gear Solid 5, on the other hand, well, let's just say the closest thing to a one on one fight was the boss battle against Eli, but that was certainly no epic final confrontation. It was just Venom schooling the brat. It's a damn shame because these epic final fights served as a culmination of a long, arduous journey that is almost at the core of Metal Gear's DNA. Even Peace Walker had some semblance of an epic final battle, even if it was against a manned Metal Gear Zeke rather than the typical man-to-man -man fight. And what kills me most about such a key moment missing in Phantom Pain is that it could have been implemented so beautifully to elevate the tame ending. Now, before I discuss how a one-on-one -on -one battle could have been implemented, let's first talk a bit about what Metal Gear Solid 5 was intended to be. The goal was for the game to be the missing link between Peace Walker and Metal Gear 1, and to bring the series full circle. On some level, it did succeed. Through Venom Snake, Kojima made us, the players and the fans of the series, the bridge to bring the series full circle. We became Big Boss, we were the ones who took over Outer Heaven, while the real Big Boss made preparations in Zanzibar Land, and we were essentially memorialized into the game as Kojima's final gift to us before his departure. It wasn't necessarily the finale or the story that many fans wanted, but it's the one that Kojima gave us, for better or for worse. And I think a big reason for why Metal Gear Solid 5's story was so poorly received by fans is because the fan service at the end felt so impersonal. If you think about it, that's what the Venom Snake twist really is. It's Kojima's attempt at the ultimate fan service by turning us, the players, into something equivalent to Big Boss. But there was something half-assed about the delivery. We only got to find out about Venom Snake's identity towards the very end of the game, leaving little room for us to become acclimated with the game's ultimate truth. There are no extra missions that follow after we learn the truth of Venom Snake, and there are also no missions that really link us to the events of Metal Gear 1. We never truly get to experience building Outer Heaven. We get a wink and nudge in Phantom Pain's final cutscene with the Outer Heaven logo, but it just feels kind of cheap, as if a ginormous shortcut was taken to make a point. And perhaps most impersonal of all was the way the truth about Venom Snake was revealed, through a pre-recorded audio cassette tape. We weren't even given the fan service of seeing ourselves, Venom Snake, meet the real Big Boss face to face with no bandages and with no bullshit. It's really strange, because Kojima's usually a master of fan service. Metal Gear Solid 4 in particular comes to mind. That game's story wasn't perfect by any means, but the fan service was just off the charts, offering fan service that we got to experience and not just told through word of mouth. On the other hand, Phantom Pain relays the ultimate fan service, us becoming Big Boss, through word of mouth, through this impersonal cassette tape. A voice just tells us, hey, you're Big Boss, bye, and that's it. As much as I appreciate Kojima's attempt, there was heart lacking in what should have been his ultimate fan service. But there is a way that I believe he could have made it work, a way he could have made the Venom Snake fan service more personal and allowed us to experience the fan service to really end Phantom Pain on a high note. Imagine this. We finally get to the point in which Venom Snake receives the Man Who Sold the World tape and he starts listening to it. Ideally, I would have liked it if Big Boss was there personally to tell Venom face to face, but for the sake of consistency, let's just go with Kojima's cassette tape idea. 
Eventually, Venom Snake finishes listening to Big Boss's tape, finally remembering who he really is and what his true purpose is. So he takes the tape out, flips it over to the side labeled Operation Intrude N313, thereby fast forwarding to Outer Heaven, and then he inserts the tape to play its contents. So far so familiar, right? Nothing I've said so far is really anything new. Now here's where my vision starts to diverge. Instead of playing random static sounds after the tape is inserted, you hear a familiar noise, the classic ringing of the codec from Metal Gear 1. Eventually, someone picks up, and this is then followed by an all too familiar voice. David Hayter's voice as Solid Snake emanates from the tape recording, and you hear him say something along the lines of, This is Snake. Commander, I'm inside Outer Heaven. Kept you waiting, huh? On the other end of the codec call, you hear Kiefer Sutherland's voice briefing Solid Snake using the exact words used in the original Metal Gear 1 for the MSX. This is Big Boss. Operation Intrude N313. Infiltrate the enemy space, Outer Heaven, and destroy the ultimate weapon, Metal Gear. And as this pre-recorded codec call is playing, we see Venom Snake walking back into the room, now sullen, as he comes to terms with the possibility that his life might soon end, with Solid Snake having soiled his plans at every turn. He punches the mirror in frustration, turns around, and as he starts walking into the veil of smoke and through the darkness, instead of the scene fading to black, you hear a noise. <laughs> A giant roar emanating from what could only be a Metal Gear, followed by an explosion. Metal Gear TX-55 has fallen. Then, Outer Heaven's alarms kick in as the self-destruct sequence is activated. As alarms blare in the background, you can also hear the familiar voice of Donna Burke as the iDroid, robotically stating the warnings from Metal Gear 1. As the sound of the alarms and the iDroid-like voice permeate in the background, Venom continues to walk into the darkness and through the smoke, but instead of the scene fading to black like it does in Phantom Pain, the smoke eventually clears as the scene seamlessly fades into an entirely new yet familiar setting. It's a rectangular room with six metallic boxes evenly spread out. It's the very same room from Metal Gear 1 in which Venom Snake confronts Solid Snake, but this time fully rendered and gorgeously realized on the Fox engine, with Venom Snake situated in the exact same position from Metal Gear 1, blocking the exit door while facing the entrance door through which Solid Snake will soon enter. After a brief moment of stillness, the camera then pans away from Venom Snake and towards the entrance door, which opens right on cue. Stepping through the door is none other than a young, green Solid Snake, entering his final battle arena, who is also beautifully realized, fully rendered, and brought to life by the Fox Engine. The camera makes sure fans can fully digest every delicious detail of the awesomeness that's unfolding before them, before it pans back to Venom Snake masquerading as Big Boss. It is at this point that we hear Venom Snake speaking the exact same dialogue from the original Metal Gear 1 in Kiefer Sutherland's voice. Solid Snake, I've been expecting you. I'm the Supreme Commander of the Foxhound Unit and the leader of the Fortress Outer Heaven. Big Boss, I gave this mission to you, a rookie, thinking I could use you to fool the rest of the world. But you were too good. You went too far. Solid Snake, I'm not going down alone. I'm taking you with me. Prepare to die. The camera then does one last pan. It zooms out to position itself in the classic Metal Gear bird's eye view that fans know and love, giving an exact Fox Engine replica of Metal Gear 1's final battle. And while the camera's panning out, we hear an orchestrated version of the classic Operation Intrude N313 theme from Metal Gear 1. <laughs> And once the camera finishes panning back, the battle begins with controls readjusted to accommodate for the new point of view, and an orchestrated version of Metal Gear 1's Red Alert theme starts playing. You, as Venom, are armed with a simple rifle, just like in Metal Gear 1, while Solid Snake is armed with a rocket launcher that he found during his infiltration of Outer Heaven. You are clearly outgunned and outmatched, but that's the point. Venom Snake is meant to lose this battle. And when he does, the game ends with one final cutscene showing Solid Snake escaping through the exit door while Venom lies there, making peace with his demise. Finally, after a calm stillness, everything flashes white for a second. The sound of an explosion, and then nothingness. 
Having shown Venom Snake's final moments in Outer Heaven, the game's timeline credits begin to roll, and thus, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain truly comes to an end. But wait, there's an alternate way Venom's battle against Solid Snake could end. While the battle was designed for the players to lose, with enough practice, it's actually entirely possible for you to defeat Solid Snake. And here is where Kojima can implement one of his clever fourth wall breaking jokes. If the player manages to defeat Solid Snake, they'll be greeted with a game over screen, one labeled Time Paradox. Nothing truly comes of beating Solid Snake, as that breaks canon, but it's still a cool opportunity for Kojima to be Kojima, essentially. And that's it! One extra addition to Phantom Pain's ending that I think would've made a world of difference. As I've stated before, what the Venom Snake plot twist, aka Kojima's ultimate fan service, lacked was the personality, heart, and intimacy that could be found in all other fan services, easter eggs, and fourth wall breaking jokes in past games. Again, the Venom Snake revelation was the very last thing we got to experience, and the game gave us nothing significant to do with our newfound truth and identity. But the addition of this flash forward that allows us to play as Venom Snake knowing he's the player and being able to be that person and battle Solid Snake, that would have been poetry. At this point, it wouldn't just be Kojima telling us, hey, here's my ultimate fan service to you. It would be him dropping us into the fan service itself and allowing us to experience the ultimate fan service as we battle the iconic character and the iconic voice that made so many of us fans fall in love with the series in the first place. With this minor but pivotal addition, I think the series would have truly come full circle. Also, consider this. Had Phantom Pain implemented this finale, this series would have come full circle in a very meta way, as the game would have allowed us to fight the only one of the five snakes we have not yet fought one-on-one, -on -one, Solid Snake. In Metal Gear 1, we got to fight Venom Snake. In Metal Gear 2, we fought Naked Snake. In Metal Gear Solid, we fought Liquid Snake. And in Metal Gear Solid 2, we fought Solid Snake. Then 3 and 4 came along, and as if things weren't poetic enough, in those games, we got to fight two other key characters. The boss, leader of the Cobra unit, and the origin of the codename Snake, and Ocelot, the only character in the Metal Gear series to have met all five snakes. So the only snake that was left for the player to confront was Solid Snake. Metal Gear Solid V was the perfect opportunity to let players do that, and it kills me that such a beautiful opportunity was wasted. But most importantly, this was Kojima's chance to deliver a truly epic fan service that might have made people fall in love with the ending by allowing us the player, aka Venom, the last protagonist of the Metal Gear saga, to confront the first protagonist in the Metal Gear saga, Solid Snake. Even with all the unanswered questions, it is my belief that this would have made Phantom Pain truly feel as though the series had come full circle through us with Venom acting as our proxy as we would have experienced the series coming full circle through gameplay and not just through word of mouth. And frankly, on a simpler note, I just wanted to see Solid Snake and hear David Hayter's iconic voice one last time. So there you have it folks, my thoughts and opinions on how a one-on-one -on -one battle between Venom Snake and Solid Snake would have been the perfect way to end the game and how this was the one tradition in numbered Metal Gear games that should have never been removed. Obviously this is all subjective, so you might agree or disagree, but regardless of which, let us know in the comments below what you think about my proposal. And to be further updated on all things Metal Gear, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah! I'll see you guys next time. Young out.